Delaney and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Uh, Irish Football Fan TV, I've got Nick, Steve and Paul here with me. Uh, so, Chelsea versus Stoke, can we talk about how good, <laughs> how good Morata is? Harry Kern on me. It's going to be a mouthful for you, Nick. It's funny, like, I, 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 was, I, was watching, I was watching a match of the day and just as me, I don't know if it's his, his shape or his movement or his height or what it is, but it just reminds me so much of Rip Van Um Just yeah. his kind of movement. It's strange. Just I saw him kind of in full stride and he just reminds me of him. Um, you know, I think kind of with the head down. Kind yeah, of, yeah, but even I don't know what it is. Just his, his height or his movement or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. That goal, that goal was like that goal he scored for Chelsea was like when it's yeah, all kind of lob over the top. Yeah, he, yeah, where he yeah. smoked Darren Fletcher. Yeah, and like, felt sorry for him. Like, yeah, and I mean he's kind of he's he kind of played a wide for you. Oh, yeah. But he um, oh, he's he's, well he's, he's been more central now, and I mean he's uh, no, he looks like a smart player and a, a decent signing for Chelsea. You know, he could replace him for Costa when he eventually. Eventually heads off. As I yeah. said, yeah, as I said, the last one, um, he he does look like Diego Costa with pace mm. and probably a better touch. Yeah, like he's got what well, he's got six goals in six games now. And Chelsea, he can score which, with his feet now. Yeah, score with his feet <laughs> as well as his head. Um, but I said it before the season. Ross and Barry gave me loads of pelters for it. Morata's one of the best strikers in the world already, and, and he's he will. The best. Yeah, but he will be the best striker in the world when he gets himself under his, or when he gets really under. His, Ross and Barry, you were wrong. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you flop. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to like that. Uh, but he, look, he scores goals. And he scores every type of goal. And that's what you yeah. want a top striker to do for you. Yeah. Um, he's also got this, for some for some unknown reason, telepathic understanding with Cesar Aspilicueta. Oh. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Of his it's, six Premier League goals for Chelsea, Aspilicueta has assisted four of them from central defence. It's the most. It's, it's the, Dave it's, or As- yeah, Dave. Dave. It's the uh, it's the best connection for goals and assists in Europe's top five league so far this season, and it's between Morata and a small central defender in the back three. <laughs> Dynamic duo. Um, yeah. I have but, my fantasy team. As also, as no, as no, no predicted. I should put him as my captain now. You have to shout out no back baller. No four nil. I looked at you sideways, but you were right. I'm looking at you straight forward now. I think <laughs> I think he's apologising. Anyway. It depends on how he's sitting. He's well, no. Video. No, a top man. We'll get you on again, no doubt. Yeah, but we, so we should talk a little bit about Stoke. It seems to be a bit of a... Um, if you seem like a chart of Stoke, it was so good. And then... Well, hang on. They lost what? the first game of the season. Where, yeah. Where'd all their central defenders go? They finished the game with Glenn Johnson, Darren Fletcher and Eric Peters in the back three. <laughs> That's not sustainable in the Premier League. Martin That's Martin. not sustainable in the League 2. <laughs> was Martin like, Lindsay not playing for uh, pa- Palace League of Manzi? Yeah, yeah, no, Martin's in. He went off for uh, Stoke, not Palace. <laughs> remember, that, remember that time he signed for Palace during the summer? Did you? Yeah, I needed Rob to Ryan, <laughs> um, I'm not going to let that go now. Um, but yeah, I think, look, Chelsea <laughs> dealt with um, Stoke, on, or Stoke on Saturday, but at yeah. the same time, Zuma was obviously not allowed to play against Chelsea. Yeah. Martin's in he went off early on yeah. which apparently was tactical which you know let's stay with Glenn Johnson and Eric Peters at centre half <laughs> um, because that's what you do when you're chasing a game against Chelsea you from Morata up front and Hazard to come off the bench did you see the, the goal though when uh, Aspen Lucas just pops it over and Johnson's just like walking mm-hmm. Glenn Johnson I've seen Glenn Johnson at Portsmouth it's the best period of his career and he st- still could never defend like he isn't a defender nah. I put him in a back three a back five a back well it doesn't attacker. matter they're kind of going for that yeah, he used to be a part play. of me was unbelievable he, he still play a bit of a back three he's you know remember that volley yeah <laughs> so no, but saying, no but still play a bit of a back three and I think like you were saying like as Bill Equator was actually a right back and I think they were going for that whole full backs playing I don't really buy that either I think you can have kind of one one full back playing in a back three but to have two and then Fletcher playing yeah. centre half is just it's just a mess and I think it takes so it takes a special I three at the back I know I love it I, do, I love it but, but even <laughs> even Diouf like Diouf or whatever Diouf was playing uh, kind of right wing back sure. so you have a striker you have a striker playing right wing back with two yeah. full back backs playing centre really half got the with a yeah. with yeah. a 35 year old central midfielder who never had much pace playing <laughs> centre half yeah so it's like, just disjointed he doesn't like Stoke <laughs> I don't actually don't mind Stoke they but they're just, a, they're just a home for players who have unfulfilled potential that's true that's right so we'll move on um, we talk about we talk about Spurs next um, yeah. is it fair to say that <coughs> we kind of take Harry Kane for granted we don't well I don't anyway um, 
Maybe a little bit. I think the English media now believe they, he's believe he's God and is yeah. like up there with Messi and Ronaldo and it's Neymar from, and all. He's from Galway. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't think they do. I, I, I think if anything, they don't really go on about him that much. I think he's the best. Well, he obviously is the best striker since uh, Alan Shearer. Mm. Like. I know, no, I know. I know. I'm not having that Wayne Rooney who's better than. Do you front. think? Do you well, think? Slightly different. Yeah. Slightly, slightly can, slightly can, different. can I pose one question to you, lads? Like, just about obviously he scored X amount of goals in in a short amount of time, and it's fantastic. Some of the goals he scored, but has the quality of defending dropped? Oh yeah, I think the quality of defending the Premier also League. Also the rules. It's shown. It's shown in. It's shown in Europe for Premier League teams in recent years that. Yeah, defensively they're just not good enough. Yeah, mm. most teams don't struggle to score goals in Europe. City showed that last year; they can score goals, mm-hmm. but they come up against a half decent attacking side and they're done. Yeah. It'll happen again. It'll happen again in the Champions League this year, with maybe the exception of Chelsea. It's this obsession as well with playing kind of ball playing centre backs like John Stones. Look, in fairness to John Stones, like he's massively improved the last six months or so. But I mean, it's the obsession with playing kind of ball. ball play. <laughs> I'm not a fan of what I have to phrase him just to keep everyone happy. But, uh, <laughs> we're not here to make people happy. Your, no, your opinion is no, oh, sorry. There's no City fans at the age of 12. Come on. <laughs> I know, but I think, I think that's a big thing as well. You know, playing ball, ball playing centre-backs, guys who might have started off as full-backs, playing them as, as centre-halves. And yeah. teams are leaking goals because of that, I think. The likes of Stones, he's a prime example. I think, I think maybe Spurs probably have the best if for teams playing a back three in the Premier League, they probably have the best back three. Yeah. Maybe Ch- maybe Chelsea aside when kind of they've got their strongest back three in there, but what is their strongest back three now? Mm. Um Yeah, well but, Spurs have settled when we jump it. Yeah, like all the Voireld and Vertongen will do great jobs on the right and left side of it. And then Sanchez covers them because he's just got bags of pace. But, but Monreal's like a young Oleg Lungy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't rate Montreal, no? No. no. More no. Gilles Grimaldi. I, I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure Arsenal only put Montreal back there because they saw that Chelsea were having such success with a Spanish fullback at Santa Ana. <laughs> no, oh, we can do this as well. Montreal's not Aspilicueta. Right. <laughs> so, uh, do we have anything to say about um, West Ham? Do you think they might survive the draw? They're going down. They're going down. They're going okay. down. They're, they are laboured in midfield and the longer this Mark Noble experiment as a professional footballer goes on, <laughs> The more into the depth of the championship okay. that team is going we'll to We'll move on. Uh, Leicester City versus Liverpool. Liverpool got the job done only just. Obviously, Vardy missed missed that penalty. Why is yeah. he even on penalties? He just what? does the same. Well, like, they show, he just watched they show a graphic. They showed a graphic just before in his last five were all down the middle. I think he yeah. skied one of them. Yeah. And uh, just straight away, it was like he's gone down the middle. What do you do? Yeah. Like, you know, so <laughs> broadcast is going to happen. He's like, like Jam- Day. James, <laughs> James Beatty was wonderful at scoring penalties by just running as hard as he could at the ball. Yeah. But at least Beatty kind of didn't telegraph it by turning his back until he was actually about to sprint up. Yeah. Vardy just stands there and waits to sprint up, doesn't look at the goalkeeper. And as soon as you don't look at a player in any sense, even if it's not a goalkeeper and a striker for a penalty, you can't even look that goalkeeper in the eye. He's like, oh, I'm in his should head. That, should that goalkeeper have even been on the field? <sighs> That's true. Yeah, I don't... I, I, I would argue that he was the last man. He took it around him and he clapped at him. <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's the law. Yeah. It's the law. Yeah. Yeah. Also, is that question is, should he have been sent off? Yeah, so, Ming- Mingale has also now saved more penalties in his Premier League career than Czech and PH Michael. Yeah, no, and he's won away from me from the <laughs> Liverpool record for 100 football. years. <laughs> <laughs> you missed my one. Uh, <laughs> What was that one? But, but I think yeah, I think Vardy was still going for that like you know the conference style happen. coach and just hit the ball as hard as you can. Hit like yeah. Yeah. he's one sa- he's one save away from equaling a Liverpool hundred li- uh, league record. Mingle. Three. Okay. And uh, can we talk a bit about um, Coutinho? How do you think he fared? Uh, it was oh, obviously it's a fantastic there. ball he put in for <laughs> Salah's goal. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. my, my, he was brilliant and he looks the player he was last season yeah. my one question for Liverpool is where does he play now when Mane's back what, what do you do you can't play Ma- you can't play Mane Salah Coutinho and Firmino all together because mm-hmm. Liverpool are shaky enough in the back as it is you can't take a centre midfielder out of there um, I think that would actually be the worst thing that could happen for Liverpool is all four of them to play I think three of them play one comes off the bench um, otherwise they're just going to be far too open I know Coutinho is a great player, and I know all four of those players are top footballers, um, and great attackers. But there comes a time where Klopp needs to realise that his team have to defend at some point because they're not going to finish 
they're not going to finish in a title race. They're not going to finish even for me with Arsenal winning. We're recording this on Monday even even with Arsenal winning tonight. I don't even think they'd finish in the top four the way they're going at the minute because the defending is absolutely kamikaze. Yeah. Um. Do you, do you think it's uh, I'll pose a question to the three. <coughs> do you think it's an arrogance from Klopp? Or just a belief in kind of his philosophies and his ideas, or do you think he his, should his try belief, and adapt it more to the Premier League? His belief is to, to try and outscore teams. He came into the Premier League saying that that's the way he likes to win matches. He doesn't care if he concedes four, if he scores four. So I just think that's the way he kind of is. And um, I think I think well, if you watch what Gerard said the the other night on um, BT Sport that. Um, the the Liverpool defence just have to start showing that they are actually capable capable of defending, and they're just not showing at the moment. But I just think that's bullshit. I don't think he's bought well enough. I think they'll go and buy Van Dijk in January. Um, I think they gambled and right. said them again. I think they gambled and said that they were look, looking to get um to get him in. Uh, so I think they took a gamble by waiting and thinking that Southampton might just go, oh yeah, the last day, you know, you, you can have him. But they never had a replacement lined up, so Southampton were never going to let him go. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I think they will buy mm. baby Van Dijk, but they'd be, it'd be cost them an arm and a leg, but I think they just need to spend that arm and leg if they want to improve in any way, shape or form. Yeah, no. Uh, how would you kind of rate, what would you give Klopp out of 10 for his, uh, his defensive coaching? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's uh. It has to be a three and a half. Yeah, well, like as Paul said, like his philosophy is in defense of it's attacking, it's outscoring teams. Um, <laughs> what would I give him out of ten? I'd say I'll be generous. <laughs> I'll be generous and give him a five because the whole kind of you know, the whole kind of the, that way too. Well, like the whole kind of you know attack is the best form of defense kind of kind of argument, but uh, I know we'll go with a three. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with a three. But look, that's that's his method of defending, attacking. You know, like Klopp. It showed when Matt Hummels started to get injury trouble at Dortmund and Subotic started to fall off a bit of a cliff um, physically that they just could not defend anymore. That's why they were in the relegation zone when he decided he was leaving. Um, they just, Without Matt Hummels and Subotic there as that strong defensive partnership and without the solidity of Schmelzer and Pieschek either side of them and with Kel and whoever kind of sit and Bender sitting deep um, in the midfield they didn't have it sounds really going at it now <laughs> <laughs> they, they weren't solid defensively without those guys in there and as soon as they started to fall off and they weren't as good and they weren't as cohesive a unit Dortmund fell off a cliff and that's why Klopp ended up leaving and he had to leave because his defensive system was found out and it's found out at Liverpool from basically the beginning Yeah. Um, he needs to realise that he Van Dijk you're, you said to sign him in January he's not the answer he's not that good I'm, I'm sorry, he's not that good. He's just a player who's proven in the Premier League. I think he'd be the answer. I think he'd be the perfect partner for Mata. I, he's great in the air, but he doesn't have... I, I don't rate him on the ball. I think he makes mistakes. Um, I think there's better, cent- I think there's better central so defenders. Who, who, would, who would you pick if you were Klopp? If I was Klopp, I'd actually go back to Dortmund. I'd bring Papas Podopoulos in. I'm I'd, bring, so- so- I'd, bring, so- I'd bring Socrates in because he's just... He's a solid operator there. He just does nothing wrong, and that's what they need. They need a yeah. player who, he's not spectacular, but he just makes no mistakes. Might throw, <coughs> might throw one out there, and it's going to seem outrageous. Because first of all, he's old, and second of all, he's pretty average. Uh, I think Ryan Shawcross would be amazing. No. <laughs> Do you think just... No nonsense. Yeah. No nonsense. Uh, Somebody with no mobility, just to, <laughs> just to kind someone of just, like an anchor Someone there. just a bit reckless. <laughs> Yeah, that's the as not, I said, that not is a popular one. Fan <laughs> <in there. laughs> right there, bit of yeah, bit of self destruction. Oh, oh. Right, right. Like no, like that, that was that was out of left field. Anyway, you like Kiriakas all over again. <laughs> oh god, 